So what's up? How you doing today? We're going to take a look at Shakedown Street and get beyond the melody and look at some of the scale and chord tones and things we can use over the uh, solo section, which is really the whole song. So um, in the studio version, Jerry just solos over that intro, a little D minor part or later in the song. It's not actually the intro at that point. And then live, he often would just play the normal little lick the over that part and then solo over the rest of the structure of the verse pre-chorus, chorus, and then the last time they jam out the chorus. So we're gonna look over the whole kind of structure of, of that, plus the soloing over the intro part. So, um, cause it's the dead and you can play it however you want, you know, we could do it, you know, one time through the thing, you can do it two, three times, I think that'd be a little long, it's a long structure, but we're just gonna focus on it doing it each part. Uh, so I'm gonna play through with the backing track for each part and then break down what's going on with the scales, chord tones, things like that. Um, so we can piece it all together for ourselves. So let's give the first part a listen to me jamming on the D minor, the intro part, and I'll talk about what is going on there. So this part right here, D minor, you may think, okay, well, the D minor scale, and you, do, and you know, you wouldn't be totally wrong. You could do that. You know, a lot of times with these, you know, modal things where it's hanging on with one chord, um, there's not really an exact way. It depends on the environment, depends on what the other people are playing and kind of which way it's pulling. But I definitely hear this as a D Dorian. And that's like a D minor scale, but instead of a flat six, a raised six, you can play it here more easily. So I'm hearing it like that, and that fits into the overall scheme as we'll see as we go along. It's the same actually as C major, and that's mostly what the song is in it is in. So uh, so D Dorian, so that works. Another thing we can do is play the notes of the D minor. So just the D minor arpeggio. So like your D minor like this, you can play any of those notes, you know. And then also this one here, you know, right here, wherever. And uh, use those as well to kind of guide you so you're not just sounding like you're playing around with a scale, but you're playing around the chord uh, as well. So with those two things, you can get a lot, uh, a lot of going. So that's it with that part. So let's look at the verse part. Let's give it a listen first. So moving on to the verse part, we've got a lot more going on, but in the end, we can just use one scale for the whole thing, C major scale. Uh, you'd be thinking, oh, it starts on G, maybe G, this, that, changes a lot, but it works over all of it, I'll explain. You've got G, C, F over C, C7, and then back to the D minor part. So it works because G would be the five chord in C, C obviously would be the one, F over C, it's just like F is the four, and then this brief moment where it goes out of the key, the C7, just this one note, instead of it being B, a B flat, but it moves so quick, I just wouldn't even bother, just don't, don't even, don't worry about it. And then it goes to D minor, and we can think of it as going back to D Dorian, but as I said before, D Dorian is the same as C, it's just thinking about it in a different way, stressing that D note instead of the C. So you can still think about it as C, that whole time, totally works. So that's what I was playing in, in that uh, example. I was just messing around with C over the whole thing, and that's it. And the chords move a little quick, so maybe we don't want to think about the chord tones quite as much as, say, over the, the D minor part, it's a little easier to do that. So just use C, and that works. So let's check out the pre-chorus part, and let's give it a listen, and then see what's going on. So now for this one, you may be thinking, okay, this is, it sounds really different, really out of the key, it's jazzy. Uh, maybe if you're not as used to these major seven chords, it, it sounds, whoa, what do I do with that? Again, it's just C major. It's really not as, as uh, 
complicated as it, as it may sound. So this would be the four chord in C. And if you don't know what this means with the chord numbers, no big deal. Just basically, it fits right in the key of C. E minor seven would be the three chord a couple times. And then we're down to the D minor, it's a two chord. G is the five. Brings it back to C. So that works over all of it. So just use C major. Now you could start using some more arpeggios and things. Hangs in the chords a little longer, easier. I didn't write it out for this. Um, wasn't being lazy. I think maybe if it's something you don't know, uh, figure out yourself because it's good to have a little gap there. I leave it on purpose because you want to learn these and try these, figure these out yourself, kind of start figuring out the notes and uh, on the fretboard if, if you're not totally fluid, figure out you know what the chord tones are. Like this is an F. You know, here's the major third. Down one fret. Oh, there's the E. There's the minor third of E. And that kind of stuff. Um, one of the best ways to do it is just do it on your own. It takes takes a while, but just gotta hash it out. So, in the long run, though, C major works. Don't worry about anything. Just find any little spot, mess it around with C. Totally works fine. So the last part, the chorus. Let's give it a listen and then figure out what's going on. So now this may be the one where you're thinking, oh, this is just C because it's over a C7, but this is the first part where it actually is a little different. It's gonna be C mixolydian is the kind of you know mode that fits right in there because of that seven. So instead of it being C major, it's C mixolydian, which is the same thing with a flat seven because it's C7 or it's kind of you know C sus. And then C7 back and forth, but that sus doesn't even really matter. Just think of it as like a you know C7 for the most part. And uh, yeah, so C mixolydian, instead of major, that flat seven, classic dead sound, most of their jams are in mixolydian keys. And instead of just using that though, it's got a little more of an edge, yeah, a little kind of bluesy edge to it, um, a little funkiness, and the blues scale works great for that. So C blues. So you can use one or the other or kind of mix and match. Like say you're up here and you've got, you know, notes from the mix leading scale. Well then throw in that minor third to the major third right here. E flat to E. Throw in that blue note. And that all, you know, works great. And also, you know, wrote out the uh, C7 arpeggio there so good to know that because again you're hanging on one chord so it's good to know those chord tones so you can shape your solos around that and not just the, the scale so you connect with the chord and the band uh, you know a little better but that's it. Uh, it hopefully it wasn't as complicated as you may think you know it's mostly C major and um, and then that's it so try it out yourself with the track I'll put the, the scales up and if you haven't already liked this stuff, hit the subscribe button and I will hopefully see you in the next video.